in 1996, really one of the greatest chess tournaments of all times has been played in a beautiful city called Dos Hermanas. And this uh, beautiful city is located in Andalusia. It's a region in Spain. It's uh, close to the beautiful city Sevilla. And uh, many, many great grandmasters played this epic chess event among them. Vichy Anand, uh, Vladimir Kramnik, Gary Kasparov, Veselin Topalov, Alexei Shirov, uh, Gata Kamsky, Judith Polgar, Boris Gerfan, Vasily Vanchuk. So many great, great attackers. To uh, have participated in this amazing tournament, and the winner, believe me or not, was the epic and really the great grandmaster Vladimir Kramnik. Vladimir Kramnik was simply the best player, uh, he shared the first place with Weston Topal, only additional criteria. Uh, made him the winner of this beautiful chess event. For instance, uh, Gary Kasparov and Vishiana finished also respectfully on the third and fourth place. But you see, I think it was really a dynamic era where basically everyone could beat everyone. Although probably Gary still was uh, the best player in the world. But you see, in such events, such beautiful tournaments, sometimes even Vladimir Kramnik, Vishiana and some other grandmasters won this amazing chess event. And we're following now probably one of the greatest games of of this uh, Dos Hermanas tournament. We are following now an epic game played by Gary Kasparov against Vladimir Kramnik in an epic, really sharp tactical battle with immortal, immortal tactical sequences. So put your seatbelts on. This is really an incredible, incredible chess game. So with the white pieces, uh, Kasparov opened with move D4. Kramnik's response was D5, C4, Queen's Gambit, C6, Slav Defense. And after a couple of moves, the game transposed into the three knights variation. Now we have the semi Slav Defense. And now after move E3, we we have reached the main line. We have knight to d7 and now when white is playing the move bishop to d3, black is using now this moment to get extra time, to get extra tempi against the bishop because after d takes c4, bishop to c4, you get another tempo against the bishop, b5, the bishop retreats and now with the move uh, e6 here and bishop to b7, uh, here uh, you're trying now to play the move a6 and now we're trying to break and enter here with the move c5. So this is now the way to go. So here after move kingside casting now comes this idea a6 and although white has now in this whole tactical sequence in the beginning uh, has now this two versus one pole majority in the center of the board this move a6 is now the preparation to play freely the move c5 and challenging the main strength of white to challenge really uh, this powerful central control so it's now really one of the most uh, played lines in the same stuff structure. So we have now the move e4, we have now the move c5 immediately by uh, Kramnik battling for the center and now Gary spices up the game with a beautiful line with the move d5. And now many of us I think would play something like this but this is actually not so good here for for uh, black because after e takes d5 you could maybe be greedy and try to take out now uh, the pawn on d5 because you have a protection of the knight but actually with the move a4 your whole position I think is falling apart what can you do you could try, try maybe something like knight to c3 b takes c3 you're trying even to release the pressure somehow but then you get destroyed on the e5 you can cover but look at this bishop to g5 is coming f6 this is just one possible line of course white doesn't have to uh, pardon me white, black doesn't have to play the game like this but look look this is really epic epic how uh, white can destroy here if you play something like this queen to h5 could come into the game so many many tactical ideas are i think here only possible uh, for white so as i said after move c5 and uh, d5 that kasparov played now kramnik played i think the correct choice he played now the move c4 he's getting used now of his three versus two pawn majority here on the queen side so he has now a dominant position on the queen side on the other hand as said uh, here kasparov has a dominant position in the center of the board so bishop to c2 queen to c7 knight to d4 uh played by kasparov hitting the pawn on e6 and now uh here we have knight to c5 protecting now the pawn on e6 now b4 uh, c takes uh, b3 on a takes b3 and now b4 by kramnik deflecting now the knight from the defense of the pawn on e4 and here gladly uh kramnik took now the pawn on e4 but kasparov wanted to go into this line because he hoped that he could maybe uh, somehow keep his opponent's king in the center of the board because we have to say kramnik stuck a little bit here uh, with the king in the center he has to still play a bishop's move then 
only he can castle so he needs at least two tempi in order to somehow secure the king so kasparov is now now trying really to open the position so bishop g4 knight to e4 d takes e6 and now the correct choice uh here by kramnik bishop to d6 leaving here simply the tension but after uh, e takes f7 now the queen gets deflected uh from the square uh c7 when the queen was of course here it built a beautiful queen and bishop battery against this pawn on h2. Now the queen is deflected and now uh, here um, Kramnik released, of course, the pressure here also against his king. So we have now the move f3 uh, played by uh, Kasparov. Kasparov does want to tolerate now this annoying knight on e4 that's very, very aggressive, that's centralized. And now uh, by doing the move f3, he also, I think, improved a little bit in the position of the Dashko bishop of blacks now there is of course this clear object of um of this pawn on h2 this pawn on h2 is really really a vulnerable uh, square and that's why gary kasparov has now to lock uh, the diagonal with the move g3 and maybe now kramnik didn't react in his best way maybe here immediately knight takes g3 uh, would be possible there is also another g great game in the database in this particular line so this position has been reached in 2009 for instance between david baramidze against uh arik brown arik brown played now the move knight to g3 really really wild stuff because after h takes g3 now kingside casting would be so dangerous after something like rook to a uh, two you're trying maybe somehow to get your rook into the defense now rook to d8 would be very 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 dangerous i think here for white i'm not sure how to even defend this position anymore f3 weak uh, the knight on d4 is a little bit loose uh, on the d file there is always maybe a tactic against the queen also what worth to notice is here okay white has an extra piece but this knight on a4 is really not playing in the game it's blocked out by the bishop's activity also by the pawn's activity so you need again two three four even moves to somehow get the knight on a4 into the game these other pieces of blacks are already already very dangerous so as i said this was maybe the way to go here for kramik to immediately uh, break and enter in in black's defense so but after move g3 here kramik played i think a slightly passive move he played now kingside casting and now after move f takes e4 uh that kasparov played okay obviously there are some light score problems here um now in in the position probably kramnik wanted to play on this weakness building maybe a queen and bishop bat uh, battery on the light scores and trying maybe deliver checkmate on g2 but now he made another really bad move he played on the move queen to h3 this move allows here uh actually got cuts part of to defend this position a better way was to play queen to e5 simply playing on your plan trying to get the pawn on e4 and now after something like rook to e1 now you play bishop to b8 this um whole tactic i think kramik missed here uh, with the preparation to play bishop to a7 and then hit the knight twice here on d4 uh getting also this other rook into the game for instance you could try maybe bishop to f4 you could get annoyed by this active queen but actually even rook takes f4 would be a possibility this is of course just a, just a pervert line that i'm showing you here that's the stockfish engine is suggesting but i wanted to show how really brutal this position can be for white for black so so many dirty ideas are possible here after g takes f4 queen to f4 look at this as we said the bishops are coming into the game uh eventually the rook will come again on the d file maybe also on the f file you cannot leave the protection of the e4 pawn because because then the battery is coming uh, with the queen and bishop so as i said the knight is loose here i would really not love to play anymore this game from white perspective although you're up a whole rook but as i said the rook and the knight are not playing in this line so as i said this is maybe a tactical sequence that uh here uh vladimir kramnik missed so uh let's go back so as i said after move g3 kingside casting uh, f takes e4 uh kramnik played now the move queen to h3 and this gave uh, kasparov the opportunity to play a very important defensive move queen to e2 this move is doing several things first of all it protects the pawn on e4 it protects also the second rank and it also creates the opportunity uh to deliver an annoying check on c4 
this was the way they go for Gary Kasparov. But uh, instead of this move, Kasparov tried knight of 3 He tried somehow to get a new defender into the game. And here, uh, Kramnik plays now the correct choice. He plays now the stunning bishop takes g3. Sacrifice is simply another piece. So, so far, uh, Kramnik sacrificed two pieces against Gary Kasparov, the beast from Baku. This is pretty epic, epic storytelling here. Uh, how Gary Kasparov got a little bit um, got a little bit of, of his own play here against him. After move bishop to g3, what should you do? Obviously, you cannot take um, h takes g3 is not possible because after queen to g3, king to h1, bishop to e4, very dangerous move. And now, even if you try to get the uh, knight back somehow into the game, then rook to f5, rook to h5 uh, is the winning sequence here. The game is over actually for 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 white. So that's why after move bishop to g3, here we have knight to c5. This was the correct choice by Gary Kasparov. He connects now. Uh, the knight to the, the defense of the e4 pawn, but also creates a counterattack against this bishop on b7. But now Kramnik continues the pressure. Rook to f3. Uh, here, really, really wild stuff. Kramnik sacrifices now the rook for the exchange. What should you do? Uh, if, uh, here, if you play something like rook to a2, then rook to f1, uh, queen to f1, queen to f1 is also very dangerous. Rook to c8 um, uh, attacks now both pieces. On uh, on the C file, but actually this was maybe a line that Gary Kasparov should have played after something like Bishop to E3. Now Bishop to F4 takes takes. Okay, here Black is slightly better, but nothing dramatic because these are opposite color bishops, and this should probably end with a draw. But after move Rook to F3. Here Kasparov played rook to f3 and now a uh, beautiful move of course queen to h2 you have to play now king to f1 bishop to c6 is now coming in a beautiful way into the game bishop to b5 is now the huge huge threat here Gary Kasparov was I think shocked by this aggressive active play here by Vladimir Kramnik. We have bishop to g5 here. Kasparov is desperately trying to get some pieces back into the defense, but now a bishop to b5, obviously knight to d3, you have to cover, and now a rook to e8. Probably this bishop to g5 move came with the idea to prevent uh, black to come, of course, with a rook on d8, but now. Kramnik finds another plan. He is attacking simply another weakness here, the pawn on e4. And now after rook to a2 uh, that Gary Kasparov played, here Kasparov probably hoped that Kramnik takes the, the rook on a2 and then he could of course maybe somehow defend his position by playing the move uh, king to uh, rook to g3. But Kramnik suddenly played not the optimal move. I'm not saying this is a bad move. This is probably the second best uh, solution here for black. Black is here much, much better. But actually, look what happened. Here, Kramnik missed even a fourth checkmate sequence with the move bishop to d3. Really, really wild stuff. If you play something like rook to d3, then look at this. Queen to h1, they deliver a couple of checks. And now, with the move rook to e4, the game would be over uh, here for, for Gary Kasparov. Unfortunately, Kramnik missed it, but with queen to h1, he's still staying in the game. So uh, Kramnik found simply a different tactical solution. Probably he missed his checkmate, but uh, he is still in the game. He is here still much, much better. So after move queen to h1, we have uh, king to uh, e2. But of course, now the rook is coming in a brutal way into the game. Uh, delivers an annoying check. King has to drop back. Another annoying check. And now finally, queen to a2. Now comes this... Gary Kasparov defensive idea. He's trying uh, to get rid of this bishop, but after the check, queen to a1, uh, we have king to c2, queen to c3, and now after king to b1 and rook to d4. In this position, actually, Gary Kasparov resigned. So obviously, you're going to lose this knight on d3. We have here still two connected passers. We have also two versus one situation, although these are opposite colored bishops potentially endgame uh, ideas, but uh, this is not working. The king is too endangered. Let's see maybe one possible sequence. You're trying maybe to simplify it. Then you get bishop to d3. You step back and now uh, you get this one. Rook to d5. Queen to c3. B takes c3. Now there is even a checkmate threat here with a rook to a5. Now you have to play something like king to a3, but the pawn is marching in one moment. If you're trying to protect your bank rank, then we sack the rook, deflect the uh, rook now, uh, sack the rook for the bishop here the flag the rook and now we can promote here on c1 so this would be one possible sequence but obviously here black is winning so poo, great great sharp tactical game between uh, Gary Kasparov and Vladimir Kramnik 
really we see some of these lines were maybe defendable for Gary Kasparov, but this is aggressive chess. And when there's aggressive chess, then there are mistakes, then there are inaccuracies and blunders. Uh, so sometimes we should be really, really more aggressive in our own games because you see even the top GMs, the masters, the legends of the sport, the greatest chess players of all times make also mistakes when they're under pressure. So pressure is a huge, huge factor in chess. This is not computer chess. We're still human, of course. And when you get pressured, you make your mistakes for sure. So, okay. I hope that you enjoyed this game. Really interesting game from this beautiful chess event. Uh, you see in the description the results of this tournament and also uh, some other facts about this epic, epic chess event. I hope you enjoyed this game because it was a really really one of the best of uh, of this event for sure if you want to see more gary kasparov games vladimir kramnik vishyan and immortal chess games please check out our best chess games of all times here's here the link of our playlist and what to say chess is the best of course